Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use masking tools in Luminar AI to create amazing local edits and take your images to the next level. Hello and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Angela Andrew, and today we're going to be talking about masks. So first off, what is a mask? It is a tool in Luminar AI that allows you to add an effect to a specific area of an image. And there's several masking tools inside the program. I'm gonna walk you through how to use all of them and we're gonna do it pretty quick. It's a really pretty simple concept once you wrap your head around it. So I encourage you, if you have questions, please pop them into the chat pod. I'll do my best to get those answered for you throughout today's show. I wanna say hello to Russ Manolo, and to Robert, thanks so much for joining me today. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I've got this beautiful image from one of our ambassadors up on the screen. And you can tell that it was taken most likely with a drone and there was a lot of atmospheric K's. Um, it's kind of flat. And what we wanna do is bring out a lot of the detail that's in this image. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Hey, Tom, thanks for joining us today. We're gonna to start with our Enhance AI which is my favorite kind of auto improvement tool. We're gonna to pull up that Accent AI pretty significantly and look at how that's bringing out color in the sky, some detail, even pop some contrast here into the foreground. I'd say just that is much improved. Hello, Pat, good to see you. All right, let's also use our Sky Enhancer because we do have a rather dull sky happening up here, but there is some action there. There's some clouds, there's some texture. It's not without interest. So let's use some of that sky enhancer as well. And that really does help quite a bit. Now I'm gonna go into Composition AI really quickly and straighten out my horizon. I don't know about you, but when I see a crooked horizon, it really bugs me and it's really easy to do. You just go into the Crop tool into Composition AI, move your mouse just off of the canvas, grab it with a double-headed arrow and drag and rotate. So there we go. We've now straightened that up and it looks much better. To go ahead and get out of the crop tool, Composition AI, just click on that tool header again, it'll apply the crop, and you can continue on with your edits. From there, I wanna go down and I wanna add some detail to the castle. If you look at it right now, it is, it is sharp, but it is far away, so I wanna pump up that detail a little bit. So I'm gonna start by going to my details panel. This was taken, it looks like at a higher ISO. You can see there is some noise, which we'll address in a few minutes but I want to bring out some of the detail. When we look at small details, it's one of those sliders that if you have visible noise in your image, this slider is just gonna accentuate it. So I'm gonna leave that alone and I'm gonna bring out my medium details a bit and my large details and also add some sharpening. So there we go, we've improved the detail here on our castle, it looks better, but if we zoom out, we really don't need that extra detail in the rest of the image. I just want that to be here on the castle and maybe out here on this breezeway that goes out to it. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the masking tool and add a mask. We'll go onto the paint mask menu drop down, and choose a radial mask. And I'm gonna draw a circle over my image. Now you'll notice as I did that, let me go ahead and click the ellipses here and choose show mask. Right now, the outer part of the circle is in red. Everything that's overlaid with the red is going to have the effect. Everything inside of it is gonna be protected. So I did that backwards. The way to fix that without having to, to, well, without having to fix it, is to choose this button here, and that switches that mask to where the inside of my circle is being affected. I can also adjust the shape of this, make it a little bit more oval, adjust the placement by grabbing that middle handle, and pull that out a little wider. And if I grab that outer circle, I can even increase that blend area where it's blending around the castle. Right about there looks good. So now we've added our mask to the castle, but what about this roadway here? If we wanna add a little bit of extra sharpening and detail here, all we have to do is switch from the radial mask menu to paint mask that brings up our brush, and then we can move our brush here over the breezeway. I'm gonna make that brush size smaller using the bracket keys on my keyboard, and I'm also gonna bring that opacity down to maybe about 60%, and then just paint that in over the breezeway to add in a little bit of extra detail 
in that area. And that's gonna pull away the extra detail we added out here because it's really not necessary. Now, if you notice, because we did that radial mask, we do have some outward blend from the center of that circle. If you wanted to clean that up a little bit, you totally can by again being in your paint mask, choosing the erase brush, and then grabbing the bracket keys on your keyboard to make this a little bit bigger. Let me go ahead and let's see here. Pull this off. Let's see. Oh no, it looks like YouTube might have crashed. Oh no. Oh no. Hopefully you guys are still seeing me. Um, it looks like I'm still online from this end. I'm not seeing that I have been disconnected. So hopefully it does reconnect and you guys are able to get back on here. So sorry for the issues. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and continue and hopefully you guys can see what's going on. All right, let me go back over here and I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and just pull off a little bit of that extra from those sides. There we go, there you have it. All right, so now we've added some detail to just our castle. Now, I'm gonna close out of my details tool and if we zoom in here on the sky, you'll see because we drew so much detail out of that sky, we've got some serious noise. We certainly wanna clean that up. So I'm gonna to go to the denoise tool and pull on my luminosity denoise. I'm gonna pull that up pretty significantly. And that's going to blend in some of that noise, soften it down, make it less noticeable. I'm also gonna bring up the color denoise a little bit because there are some colored speckles in there. And this is improved. There's still some noise there, there's still some grain. It's really hard to get rid of all of it, especially when it's that strong. So we're gonna address that a little bit later. I think we might replace the sky, but I wanted to show you how to bring out as much detail as possible from that as, as you could. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down and let's take a look at what that noise reduction did to our castle. It took away all that beautiful detail we just added and made everything look very muted. So what we can do, again, is use our masking tools to create a gradient, affect the outer part of the circle, and so forth. But what we can do is we made a great mask here with our details tool. So I'm going to go back to details, into my mask, click on the ellipses, and copy my mask. And now I can go back to denoise, click on the ellipses here, and choose paste. Now you'll see that everything that's being affected is going to be the castle. We want the actual opposite of that. So we're going to choose the inverse. I'm gonna click on the ellipses once more and invert this mask and it's gonna change it so everything around my castle is being affected and everything that's not covered with the red overlay is being protected. So now we're just doing our noise reduction everywhere else. There is some visible noise here on the castle, but I'm gonna to choose to go ahead and retain that because I don't wanna mute the detail that's there. Because this picture was taken from so far away, it does lose a little bit of that finer detail and by doing noise reduction, it kind of compresses that even more. So I wanna make sure that's preserved. So let's go ahead and close out of that and take a look at where we've come so far. Let's do a couple of other things here with our landscape tool, just to overall improve this image. I'm gonna use a little bit of dehaze and that's gonna cut through some of that haze from that aerial image. And I'm also gonna bring in some golden hour just to warm it up and look how that's making this side of the castle with the lights hitting it. It just really adds that nice sun-kissed glow. So from there, what I wanna do is address the sky. If you guys notice that so far what we've done, it looks good, it's actually much improved from where we started. But that sky, even though it still had some great cloud detail, there's so much noise up there that I think we can do better. So I'm gonna to go to Sky AI and down into my sky selection menu, I'm gonna choose these twilight skies. This is a set of skies that you can download from the Skyland Marketplace. They're really beautiful. And I'm gonna choose this one here, Twilight Sky 3. And we'll go ahead and pop that in the image. And you'll notice it looks a lot stronger than what we have here. And that's because a lot of the other adjustments we've made to this image also affect the sky that you put in here. So what I wanna do really quick before I go ahead and do further adjustments to the sky, I'm gonna close up the sky menu, go back up to my Enhance AI, and I'm going to turn off the sky enhancer. And look at just that one change makes that look much more natural. The sky was already enhanced by whoever created this overlay, so we don't really need to do any further sky enhancement on it. 
Let me go back down to Sky AI and let's make this blend a little bit better with our image. The first thing you might notice is the light is coming from the opposite direction. We have the right side of the castle here that's lit and the left sky side of the sky that's lit. So those are the opposite of what they should be. I'm gonna go into sky orientation and start by flipping that around. And you'll notice immediately that starts to blend a little bit better. I'm also gonna choose the horizon position button here. And this is gonna bring up a gradient and I can then make this blend a little bit more seamlessly right there at my horizon. Might pull that in a little bit tighter. And that just gives you a nice transition at that horizon line. And you can pull this down a little bit if it needs to, pull it up, just get it to where it looks right, just about right. You can also adjust the horizontal and vertical position here. So the vertical position is going to bring that sky up and down in its placement. And you'll notice if I drag it up too far, we find the edge of that photo. So I'm gonna bring that down right about there. And I'm also going to adjust my horizon position. And this is going to scale that sky across our sky in the image. And I really love how that affects it. And look how it's even changing the relighting in the foreground. Really a cool effect. So we can pull that back a little bit further. And that's looking pretty good. Now let's go to our mask refinement. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my global down a little bit lower here and see what that does here at my horizon line. Now I'm gonna pull it up and we're taking a look at how that masking is blending into the foreground. Because it's so hazy here in the distance, you wanna make sure that you're not getting an unnatural effect here along the horizon. So we can also do a little bit of closed gaps and make this look just right. I'm gonna click that horizon position again one more time and pull this down just a tiny bit. And pull in that blend, I think, a little bit closer too. I think I spread it out a little bit too much. There we go, that's better. All right, we can also take a look at our scene relighting. This is gonna make the foreground match the lighting in the background here a little bit better. Because we changed the colors up here, we wanna bring in some of these pinks and oranges into our foreground. You can see some of the reflection coming through here but I wanna make it a little bit stronger. So I'll pull up the relight strength a little bit higher. You'll notice that's darkening it down and making the overall effect a bit more natural. I'll also add some relight saturation and that's going to bring more of the colors from the sky into our foreground. We'll take a look here at the chat and see what's going on. Okay, it looks like it. some people have me. Awesome, okay, good deal. Looks like there's some interesting issues going on with YouTube today, so I apologize for that. Okay, now let's take a look at our reflection. I do wanna pull up that reflection amount a little bit more, bring a little bit more of the color into some of these pools of water out here, it just makes it look really beautiful. And then we'll go to our sky adjustments. I'm going to pull up my atmospheric haze because this was a hazy image. This is again gonna make this feel and blend much more smoothly. And then I can leave the warmth alone and I can adjust the brightness. So again, we're trying to blend this and make it look as seamless as possible with our image. Now, the final thing I wanna do is kind of an advanced vignette. We took a look at the masking tools on our individual tools here in the tools menu. I know I'm saying tools a lot right there. So here in details, we created a mask and so forth. Well, in addition to being able to create a mask on a specific tool like details or structure or color, we also have our local masking tool. And there's a lot of different uses for this. I'm gonna to go to add and choose basic. And I'm gonna create what I like to call an advanced vignette. So again, I'm gonna go here to this paint mask drop down menu. I'm gonna choose a radial mask and I'm gonna draw, I wanna make sure I'm affecting the outside of the circle. So I'm gonna choose this button here and then draw my circle over the castle. And what I wanna do here is a nice smooth vignette. So I'm gonna do a big wide transition and the center of the circle is preserved and everything that has the red overlay will be affected. Now let's go over to the ellipses menu. We're gonna hide that mask and I'm gonna pull down on that exposure. And that's gonna darken everything outside of that circle and just draw us in a little bit more subtly into the castle. And you can adjust a few other parameters here. You can pull down a little bit on the structure, which backs off some of the detail. You can pull down on the highlights. You can do all manner of things. So instead of just being able to darken the edges, this using a radial mask, using local masking and basic, 
gives you a lot more control and several other parameters that you can customize for that advanced vignette. All right, so there's that. And then the final thing I wanna do is we haven't looked at a gradient mask. So I'm gonna do one more quick adjustment here. I'm gonna choose add in basic. And we wanna darken up this foreground a little bit more. Again, we're trying to draw the eye into the castle. So on the paint mask menu, I'm gonna choose a gradient and I'm gonna draw up from the bottom right about like so. And that's causing a nice wide blend between the foreground and the castle. And from there, I'm just going to very gently darken that foreground. You can see if I drag it down far, you can see what's being affected. But I just really wanna subtly darken that down, maybe right about there. And then I wanna paint back in a little bit more of that light on the path here on the breezeway that's going out to the castle. So then again, I'm gonna go back to my paint mask, choose erase, I'm gonna bring that opacity down really low and make sure my brush is really, really soft. So it's got that nice um, smooth transition between the area that's affected and the area that's protected. And I'm just going to do a quick little draw over this just to lighten up that path a little bit more. So there you have it. We've gone over a lot of the masking tools that are available in Luminar AI. Everything from using your paintbrush to creating a radial mask, which creates a circle or an oval over an object, how to modify those types of masks so you can really customize it and get the effect placed right where you want it. You can do that on tools and you can do that in the separate local masking. And that gives you a wide variety of parameters to be able to customize your images and really make them come to the next level. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is one of the longer episodes we've done. And I apologize again for any issues that YouTube had today. If you have any questions and you're watching this recording, make sure you pop those into the comments below. I'll do my best to get those answered for you. And if you enjoyed this, make sure you give us a thumbs up here on YouTube. We always love seeing that. And with that, I wanna wish you guys a great rest of your day and we'll see you at the next coffee break. Bye everyone.